So let's take a look at how you can deal with a loaded data frame using the tools from uh, Tidyverse or the ddplyr. So first of all, I want to load these, uh, this package named uh, Tidyverse. Um, that seems to run fine. And then I also want to load uh, another package named New York City Flights 13. Um, but okay, I haven't installed that yet, so I just need to, to do that install package. Like that, and that takes a moment for it to, to download and, and install the package. Um, now I hope it, it will be working in, in just a moment. It's just I have something to, to demonstrate uh, based on. So now that worked. So uh, first of all, we can load the, the package or look at the help from the package and and take and um, take a look at what will actually uh, be inside this. We can also look at the index down here and and get a much more detailed uh, uh, description of it. Um, so I think this is uh, good enough. What we will be looking at is uh, these uh, flights data. And again, there's a description of, of the data frame over here uh, with information about the time of the flight and departure and arrival and, and so on and the amount of delay and a whole lot of, of information. Uh, but let's not look at that uh, right now. If we just load it, uh, we can see we have the, the flight data set here, and we can see that we have year, month, day, departure times, scheduled department time, and, and so on. So this is a, a quite large, big set of uh, data and a lot of information, and for certain analysis, you might not want to actually uh, look at all of these. So let's try to uh, see if we can only look had planes with a certain tail number. I'll just take this one here and see if we can figure out how many flights were registered in 2013 for, for that flight. And for that, we should use uh, the filter command. The filter commands go through all observations, that is all rows in the data set, and checks if a certain property that you specify here is uh, filled. So in this case, I demand that the tail number should be exact this value here. And now we can see, uh, okay, what comes out of it. At the lower part of this, we can see that there will be 111 rows. So the plane with this tail number conducted 111 flights in 2013, at least within uh, this uh, data set. And compared to before this uh, filter, we had uh, 300,000 uh, rows, so it definitely limits uh, the data set uh, quite much. Okay, um, so using filter, we are able to select uh, a certain part of of the of the data we, we want to look at, and you are able to to use information in the columns and combine that with uh, values that that you want to. So let's take into the, and if we specify additional values here, they all should be true for it to, to go through the, the filter. So if we want to only look for, for flights during uh, February, we could do the, the following thing here. And it seems there is a certain uh, period between uh, the, the flights uh, during uh, this um, during this month, so it flies one day and then takes a few days off and flies again and a few days off and, and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, so with filter we are able to uh, choose from whatever part of the, the data we, we actually want to look at. And again, I use this uh, pipe operator to say to use the 
flight data and put into the filter function as the first argument. It's just clearer to you do this uh, through the, the pipe operator than with a, a different uh, syntax. A different thing we can try to, to look at is the group by uh, command here, which is um, makes it possible to take observations inside this uh, data frame and then group them and then we can do some summarizing uh, by different properties. So uh, if I just say I want to group this by the months, what we are seeing here in the output, actually there, there is no difference. But now we are able to say we want to summarize um, and then say I think we can do it like this and then count the number of observations for, for each of the column. That's not possible. Okay. That was probably not just what uh, a count should be doing. I think it's named n row instead. Mm -hmm. Problem with summarize input n. I cannot find function n rows. Um, okay. So here we can specify a function that we will use to um, to summarize all of the observations after they have been split through each uh, month. So um, let's try to to do something uh, different here. Okay, yeah, we could do it like this to ask about the length of the variable containing the number of uh, the observations. So we'll just get the, the number of elements in, in this list. And here we can see how many flights were conducted in the first month, that in January, February, March, and, and so on. They seem to be quite uh, stable uh, around here. So no big trend in, in this part. So in this way, we can uh, group by a certain property, in this case, uh, the month, and then get some counts for uh, how often um, or how many times this observation occurs. Um, we are also able to add additional summaries of, of this type of uh, data set. So let's take a different look at, at the data down here. Again, we have taking the, the flights data set. And just to take a brief look here, we can see what columns are present. And I want to group by the tail number. Um, and then see what is the average flight distance of, of each of the flights. So uh, group underscore by, and then we have the tail num here, piped this through, and then um, we can say summarize and uh, distance equals to the mean of the distance like that. And what should come out here is uh, uh, the different tail numbers and what their mean distance is uh, on the flights. And these are not uh, presented here in some kind of specific order. And we can see there are uh, 4,000 different planes or tail numbers that have been in, in use. So that's a quite big number. But if we're interested in, in locating um, the planes that flew the, the least or the most uh, on, on average, we can pipe the data through to this uh, arrange uh, function and then specify according to which uh, value we should uh, sort the, the values here. So we can see uh, some of these uh, planes in 900 and something UE is uh, often used on, on flights that are rather short, only 173 miles. I think they are in, in mile. Yes, they are. Um, oh, sorry, 
that's behind the, the small webcam image. And if we go to the opposite end, um, now we are not seeing all the data, then we have some flights that are flying uh, much longer. Um, if we want to sort this in decrementing order, we, or descending order, we write DESC around the, the value here, and then it will be sorted in, in the opposite way around. And here we have some flights that have flown a very long distance. And one thing that is peculiar to me is that they have the exact same distance here, so they might be flying the, the same route. Um, so let's see. I'll just include how many flights they have actually uh, done here um, through this uh, period. So as you can see here, by using these uh, few commands, uh, actually we're not uh, through yet, but uh, if we use uh, the commands uh, filter, uh, we can select whatever observations in, in the data set we want to, to look more into. And we have this uh, group by and summarize that makes us divide the data sets into group and then we can calculate some summaries for each of the groups. Um, I have also demonstrated this arranged method for you and the thing we are missing now is a command named uh, mutate which allows us to generate new data columns uh, based on existing ones. So uh, let's just take the, the flights uh, data set again. Well, I actually also want to, to mention the command select. But if we show it here, then the first thing I will do is to demonstrate the select uh, value here. Um, what to to look at here do, do, do. so if I want to yeah I can take a look at the airtime and the distance and I only want to keep those then I can write uh, the name of, of the columns to keep and then do it here and then all the other remaining columns are removed and then I can uh, calculate new values given whatever is uh, less so if I want to calculate the distance it's uh, or the velocity or the average velocity is the distance divided by the air time so in this way we can see um, how we can calculate the, the velocity here and of course we have thrown out information about the, um, the location and, and so on but um, that's what we are that's something sometimes what we actually want and if we have thrown too much information out we can just add it uh, by specifying the, the columns we will want to keep here and this can of course be uh, combined with this uh, arrange uh, function again. So uh, if we want to locate the plane with the highest uh, velocity, then we can see it's actually being used on, on obtained on a quite short uh, flight of only a bit more than, than an hour of a, of a certain distance here. And from that, we just go down in, in the, the, the speed here. We can also just take the look at, at the slowest flights. That actually takes quite a long time. And I'm a bit unsure about how this airtime is, de is determined. Uh, it, it's written down here. That is the amount of, of time spent in the air in minutes. So, um, yeah, okay. So now we have looked at uh, 
these uh, commands, so the filter, group and summarize, the range, the mutate, and uh, the select statements. Uh, the select command here also have a, a different option, and that is to make it possible to actually throw out uh, a specific column. So if we want to get rid of the year column, I can write minus year, and then just run this, then it will remove the column with the name year. There's a lot of more details about how to use these uh, columns or these uh, methods, but I think this is a quite good start on what is possible to achieve using these commands. So if you need to to work with a, a data set inside uh, R, then uh, I think you should be able to, to know these, uh, these variables uh, or these methods uh, quite well, but only these, and then you're able to combine them in, in a large number of ways so you can actually generate and plot whatever data you, you need to do.